make this video to help anybody who's trying to connect a MIDI commander MIDI foot switch to an iPad running multi-tracks playback. Uh, I was having a hard time figuring out how it connected and so if somebody's in the same position I uh, just wanted to throw something out there. There weren't a lot of resources included with the MIDI commander uh, and I couldn't find any YouTube videos anywhere either. So basically I've got an uh, iPad here with the multi-tracks uh, playback app going and then I have the MIDI commander. Uh, I got this USB B to lightning cable on Amazon and tried to connect it directly from the MIDI commander to the iPad and it wasn't sending a signal so I'm returning this to Amazon. Um, this is the USB B to USB A cable that came with the MIDI commander. Uh, this is the Apple camera adapter for the iPad. Um, it's just the USB connector there so when you connect your USB cables that way the USB B side goes into the MIDI commander like so and that's pretty straightforward I don't know if I had a bad cable or if uh, there was some sort of issue with the connection um, with the other cable but this seems to be working pretty consistently so you plug this end in, into the iPad I downloaded an app actually from the app store called MIDI Wrench. It picks up a signal to determine if the MIDI commander is actually sending a signal via MIDI to the iPad. I would recommend uh, setting it up that way first just to make sure that it's sending a signal that your cable, uh, your connections are good. The MIDI commander, if you hold down the down arrow as you press the power button, it will boot up in setup mode. And I'll show you the setup that I have um, that I was able to get this thing to work. So you're able to control the channel that each preset runs through. I changed everything to two, uh, just so it didn't send a signal. I'm, I'm sending the, the custom channel on one. That's what I'm gonna be using in the playback app. Um, I don't know that you have to do that, but I was just trying to be cautious as I was working through uh, what I would need to do to be able to get this to work. Then as you toggle over to the custom one settings, I'll show you what I'm using and uh, how I was able to get it to work. So. I changed it to 1, 2, 3 instead of ABC, and I'll show you why, as well as the 8X um, for the bank, and I'll show you also why I did that. The IMM just means it's going to send uh, the response from the, the iPad is going to be immediate when you press the button. Um, there's another setting that has a delay. For the SCR and the PC start, I left those as 1. I'm not entirely sure what those do, but it's not affecting uh, the way that it's working, so I'm going to leave those as is and I'm not using any expression pedals, so I turned those both off uh, by changing their signal to zero. Then you have your key one through four and key A through D. Um, you know, on your pedal here, you've got A through D and one through four. Each one of those, you're able to assign the um, either PC, which is program change, or CC, which is control change. Um, so which type of signal it's sending, what uh, number it's sending, and then toggle on off. So for each of the um, buttons, you want to change them to, to PC. I was originally trying it with CC. Um, that's a control change, so it's sending an individual signal versus a PC. But for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to work that way. Um, so we're actually sending program change signals uh, each time we press the button, but it seems to be working just fine. And then your toggle, you want it to be off. Um, basically, when the toggle is on and you press the button, the button stays pressed and you have to press it again for it to turn off. Uh, but we want to send one signal each time we press the button. So then uh, on keys one through four, I started with five. So I have five, six, seven, and eight. Um, I wanted A through D to be one through four since I'll be using those more frequently since they're at the bottom and they're easier to step on without stepping on the others. So A through D, I have one, two, three, four, and then one through four, I have five, six, seven, and eight. And uh, as you can see, as I kind of click through there, each one is identical. Uh, PC6 off, PC7 off, PC8 off, and then with A through D, it's 1 through 4. All right, so when you boot up the MIDI commander to uh, pull up your settings for custom 1, you hold down the C button. C is custom 1 and D is custom 2. Um, the other 6 are for pre-programmed settings for different um, pedals. So I'll uh, hold down C and press the power button. And then it'll boot up and it should say uh, custom one here at the top. And then um, it starts off with channel one because one is the first preset that we have. So like I mentioned, I have one through four, five through six. If you hit the up arrow, 
I mentioned that I have it on 8x, so when I hit the up arrow, it moves it up 8 um, settings, so now A is 9, so you've got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and if you press it again, it starts here at 17. So you can go 5x or 10x, um, that's fine, but if you want to have sequential um, commands as you're programming your um, software for uh, the commands that you're sending it. it makes more sense to me with eight pedals to have it 8x so we've got one and then nine here um, so I'll go back down to one so you'll notice as I press across we've got two three and four etc and then it should be eight yep so it seems to be working fine I would check at, after you finish uh, messing with the settings that it's you know properly doing that it makes more sense in my mind to have uh, numbers here than letters so that's why I changed it to that as well so now you can open your um, MIDI Wrench app just to make sure it's sending a signal. Um, if I press the button here, you'll see um, that you're going to get a feed. And I'll just press the buttons to make sure you're able to see it. I know it's kind of small. Um, one issue that I've had with the MIDI Commander is sometimes when you press the button once, it will send two signals, an on signal and an off signal, or maybe two on signals. Um, so I've, I've run into limited uh, issues as I've been using playback as far as uh, getting double signals and hitting play and pause at the same time. Um, I guess that's just a minor complaint, but it's, it's, it hasn't you know, had too much of an effect on um, how it's functioning overall. It's been pretty good. So once you open up your playback app, you can do the MIDI mapping by holding down on the edit button. When you hold that down, it'll say MIDI mapping and you click there. And then it's gonna bring up all the different, uh, or highlight all the different areas that you can map using the MIDI controller. Uh, what I've been doing is mapping the play button to B, which is channel two. So whenever you press the button, you'll notice that the number actually appears next to the icon uh, that it's gonna be controlling. I'll show you why I do play on two. Um, of course, do it however you want, but that's what's been working for me. Um, in C, I've been doing the infinite loop. Uh, that's to be able to, if you want to repeat a bridge or repeat a chorus, you can just click that button and it will repeat it infinitely until you press it again and then it'll move forward in the song. And then in D, I've been doing the fade out. And that's if you run into some sort of snag uh, with the live musicians, you can fade out the track. Uh, the click will keep going and then you can fade it back in if you get back on. Um, for the top channels, I've been programming to the different sections in the, uh, in the set list that I have prepared. So uh, when you start the set list, it's going to um, trigger the very first song. So in this instance, I have a pad uh, that'll be starting first. So whenever I'm ready to move on from the pad into the sec or the first song, which is Unstoppable God, I program Unstoppable God as uh, number five, which is the number one channel. Um, that's because after I hit play, the pad will already start. So I don't have to tell it number one play. I just hit play. Then whenever I'm ready to move on from the pad and start Unstoppable God, I hit two. And then if you're using playback, you know about the different transitions to each song. I have it to where it will run automatically into song number two and song number three. So I don't really need to program anything in there because the app is going to move it through each song. Then once the third song ends, I have it set to not transition into um, the second set, which is a pad. So if you're doing some sort of welcome or scripture reading or anything like that, um, you, you can program a hard break. But whenever I'm ready to start the next section, I actually don't have to program um, this pad to a channel because once this song ends, it's ready to start on um, the next section. So all you have to do is hit play after that song ends and it will start that pad. So what I do is I program when I'm ready to move out of the pad into the next button, which is channel two, uh, which actually sends the number six. So we've got five and six here. So I'll show you what that looks like whenever you are ready to start. Um, you just hit the play button, which I have in B, channel two. and you'll notice that it starts. So then when you're ready to move on to uh, the first song, you hit one, one two, it'll cue it up. Intro, two, three, four. So that seems to be working good. You can uh, pause it with channel two. You can start it again with channel two, fade it out, program that in D, and that seems to be working correctly. We'll fade it back in. And then here you've got your infinite loop. So when I press it, you notice it comes on. Uh, I press it again and it goes off. So the reason I didn't program play into one is because if you want to use additional features, um, for example, in playback, you can program each song section 
um, as a channel. Um, so if you want to go to a specific spot in the song, you can program that as a channel. And then there's also a forward and back section um, for each song. So if you want to move up, uh, do like a live reorder and move up in the song, you can use the right arrow um, to be able to do that. And so what you'll do is you'll change your um, number from number set from one through eight to nine. Um, and then you can program, for example, the back section into 10, the select into 11, and the forward into 12. Um, the reason we're not using this one is because if you're ready to pause the song or to do something else and you need to go back to your first set of signals, when you hit the down arrow, it's always going to go back to channel one. So if your play pause button is in one, when you hit the down arrow, it's actually going to send that number one signal, uh, which would pause the song. So I leave the first channel blank in each section. Conversely, if you go up to nine, whatever's in nine is going to get a signal as soon as you uh, toggle up to it. One other thing that I plan to use the MIDI Commander for is as a page turner uh, for Music Stand. I don't know if you or your church are using Services Planning Center. Um, if you are, you can go into your settings here in Music Stand at the bottom settings and then scroll down a little bit and it says MIDI Input. Uh, when you select that one, there's a next page, previous page, metronome, and audio player. So if you pro you, in the same way that you programmed um, playback, you just click on the channel that you want to do. So if we want to go to the next page, I'll put that in B. And if we want to go to the previous page, I'll put that in A. Once you press those buttons, it's programmed. So whenever you go to your chord chart, B will send me forward and A will send me backwards. So that's it. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am not a professional when it comes to MIDI. This is just what I was able to do to get it to work for me. Um, so just go back and pause those different sections when I was going through the settings, uh, because again, that's what I was able to, to get to work. So uh, if you have any questions, you can just leave it in the comments. If someone has uh, better tips for using this as far as the playback app goes, uh, leave those as well. I'd love to, to hear your input. Um, wish you the best of luck. Thanks.